Hey, this is Rebecca Dirks with PremierGuitar.com. We are here at the Gretsch Custom Shop with Steven Stern, who basically is the Gretsch Custom Shop. Part of the Gretsch yeah. Custom Shop. Yeah, we, uh, as, as you'll see, you've got some helpers, and oh, yeah. you guys are got a guys. really tight crew. So yes. uh, what we're excited to check out here is that this is kind of where things get a little wacky, a little wild, and, and you, you get to do whatever you want and whatever people want you to do, right? Yeah, there's, uh, with Gretsch there are a lot of parameters uh, with sparkle tops, sparkle bindings, different colors. Uh, some people want the, the vintage vibe with the uh, white penguin kind of thing. So there, there are a lot, of, a lot more parameters. Gosh, uh, tell us a little bit about how you got to this place because you, you've got quite a history in the guitar industry, right? Yes. Well, I started in 79 with Jackson when they were in San Dimas and I worked there from 79 to 84 and between 84 and 93 I, I was out of the business I was uh, went back into cabinet making had my own cabinet shop and I decided either I get serious about the cabinet business or do something else and I was in a band I I, th I heard of the Gretsch or the Fender custom shop and I thought oh, that would be really interesting I, I'd like to get back into doing that so I, I got a resume together, sent it in, uh, called about four or five times, and they asked me to come down for an interview. And I, I got a job at the Fender Custom Shop, and I started with the Diaquisto project, jazz guitars. They were being made in Japan, and Bill Schultz wanted to move them into the Fender Custom Shop, give them a little higher uh, uh, exposure. And I was supposed to work under a, a guy from Gibson, and he was coming in July. I started in May, and he decided not to take the gig. So John Page says, okay, the ball's in your court. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we did the Diaquisto project uh, from 93 to 97. And actually, no, until about 2000. And then Bob Benedetto signed a contract with Fender, and, and I was put in charge of building the Benedetto guitars and I had a crew of about six to nine guys and we, we were doing them up in up in this shop here and around I think 2004 they started Gretsch custom with two models a 55 Penguin and a 55 6120 and about a year and a half two years later they incorporated it into my production the Gretsch and that's pretty much where it started. And then when Bob decided to move on and open his own shop in Savannah, uh, I was left with the Gretsch, and we expanded the line. I started making some Penguins and Duo Jets. Uh, they premiered around 2008 uh, at a dealer summit we had here, and it just it exploded from there. So that's kind of where we're at. And I mean, in addition to this custom work, you've also been doing um, as of late, some really detailed tribute models. So, yes, we we have done actually four tribute models. The first one was the Brian Setzer uh, 596120. We did the the Billy Zoom Sparkle Jet, and Eddie Cochran 6120 55, and just recently the George Harrison Duo Jet. This is the uh, George Harrison tribute model. It's the prototype that we use to relic all 60 pieces and we had the actual guitar here for about three days which was very very unusual very fortunate because first of all it's you know it's in our our own home and I was able to um, really take very good detailed spe specifications of the guitar we ha had very good photos very good documentation of the guitar and some of the, the unusual aspects of it is that it, it originally wasn't all black. It was a stained uh, mahogany, and George had it painted, and there's some evidence of that where you can see some of the, the paint at the end of the fingerboard here that wasn't scraped back, and just the detailing around the binding. I, I can't imagine this guitar left the factory like that, and the way that the, the logo on the headstock was masked off and it it's so and also if you take the back plate off you can see that the label the Gretsch label was painted over so 
The only way we knew of the serial number is that it was scratched on the back plate. So we knew of the serial number. So when you go into something like one of these tribute models, the Eddie Cochran one or this, how, I mean, how do you get so detailed with every nick, every scratch, every little wave of the paint? I mean, that's, that's got to be insane. It, it is. Well, especially something like this that was so um, relic or yeah. scratched. Well, you, you know, you have the photos, and then when you have the guitar, you, you make drawings and, and templates and things of that nature and get the guy who's actually going to do the relicking to look at the guitar, get a vibe of the guitar, so... Uh, he knows what to do, and so. So, er, for any relic stuff that happens in the Gretsch er, for the Gretsch Custom Shop instruments, does all of that happen down downstairs in the relic corner? Oh well, the downstairs uh, they relic the parts. Okay. That that's all uh, oh, okay. team built Fender team built custom. The relicking up here, they do the relicking of the parts. Okay. We do the relicking of the guitars up here. Yeah. So they'll they'll relic your pickups and your yeah, bridges and everything yeah, for you. Exactly. Okay. Yes, yes. Well, on the opposite side of the spectrum, you do some pretty incredible, brand new, shiny, sparkly, yes, crazy guitars sparkle. as well. So um, let's just kind of go through some of these things. What are some of your most uh, requested models or features? Well, a lot right now. Um, we get a lot of we're getting a lot of custom color penguins, which I have right here, and these. These are our relic, or going to be relic. Uh, we have a shoreline gold penguin here. And we have a pink, uh, a, sh a shell pink penguin. And then an, an one of our, our popular sparkle guitars is a red sparkle penguin, which I have over here. And this is, this is a, a NOS, brand new. Uh, non-relic and it, this one features a uh, tunematic bridge which is is not a Gretsch feature you, they usually have like a, a space control bridge or a rocking bar bridge this customer wanted the uh, tunematic bridge with a pinned a pin base which means that it's fixed to the guitar it's so and uh, then we have we have one unusual piece here, all gold sparkle penguin. Yeah. And this is going to be relic. So you, already, you already got the hardware. The hardware is relic. I, I think this, this would have really popped if it was non relic. <laughs> <laughs> so this is quite sparkly. Wow. One of, this one here is this green sparkle. I, for some reason, I, I really like this one. This green really, I think, really looks great for some that reason. It's incredibly bright and, yes. and sparkly. That, the the uh, sparkle tops certainly are eye-catching. Yes. Do you offer the sparkle tops and basically, is there a set number of colors? Or if somebody calls, they can just say... Uh, they can, we have a whole array of sparkle colors. And even if we don't have it, could probably shoot it with a, like a silver sparkle and then shoot a trans color over that to get a color that they, uh, you know, something different. Or, Speaking of something different, uh, yes. this one in the front, I'm not sure if I've uh, seen anything quite like it. No, there ha this is the first one we've made. It's a custom order flame top penguin with a matching headstock. Okay. And it's, it's very rich looking, the mahogany. Is, is natural. When we do um, natural mahogany, we spray a, a light stain over it just to make it uh, richer. We, we use a, bra a black grain fill to, uh, it pops the grain and you can see there's a, got a little bit of little flame on the, on the yeah. neck here. It almost looks like the back of an acoustic. Yeah, so uh, this particular customer has ordered about three or four more like this, but in different styles. Oh, nice. Yes. So with the with the flame. With the flame, yeah. And then uh, here's I happen to have an Eddie Cochran tribute model. Okay. This was uh, we did uh, back in uh, o, o 010, I believe. And uh, this is a replica of his one and only guitar that he used throughout his career. And it has some unusual 
wear on the neck here in spots and I, I think a lot of these dents were, were made from the rings that he wore. I'm not sure but I, I knew he had some big rings. His, uh, his uncle showed me some of his personal belongings and uh, so that's just kind of my my guess. I mean, is, is that something you do when you do these tribute models? Part of it, you try to kind of get into the mindset of the guitarist like that? Because I know with this one, you actually the entire package had a lot of really personal items. Yes, and, and the, the value added really sets the guitar apart to have those um, those items. Like with the Harrison, you got an actual George Harrison pick, and the, the Eddie Cochran tribute was really unusual because the family had so much fan memorabilia and they um, offered that to us for the packaging. We assigned signed Christmas cards by Eddie himself. That, actual I mean, original actual ones. Original, yes. Fan club button, photos. Uh, we also um, we had his strap that was made by one of his bandmates' mothers that uh, had his name on it. We re uh, replicated that. And uh, so it was quite a package, actually. This guitar uh, was made for Steve Hunter, who's currently touring with Alice Cooper. And we made three guitars for him. And this one, unfortunately, it was damaged in shipping. So he doesn't, he has the other two. And they're, it's a, a Corvette model. And this is in surf green with a Kaler bridge. And he played his, he, we made him a black one and a Lake Placid blue. And he, He's currently playing the Lake Placid Blue. He played it on Jay Leno the other night. What are some of the more unusual, less, you know, outside the box combinations that you've made? Well, a couple, we did a gold sparkle duo jet with purple binding. And actually, that went to Steve Miller. He bought oh. that. He was just here uh, yesterday and he yeah. was, we were talking. He told me he bought that guitar and he, he actually invited me down to, uh, here is recording on that, that guitar. That was wow. very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and let's see, we did we did a penguin all for the for this uh, gentleman who was in the service, and he, it was a pink. It w wasn't as pink as this, but it was all all sparkle pinkish guitar. And and I kind of was trying to talk him out of it because I didn't I couldn't visualize it. Yeah. I didn't think it was. But actually, when it was all done, I was like, wow, this guy. He, he was pretty smart. It looked really, really cool. And uh, let's see. Hmm. We did we did one with uh, this uh, moto kind of drum covering with with silver sparkle. I did I did a couple si custom 6120s for a customer in New York. One was all all red sparkle, and the other was a silver sparkle top with uh, black back and sides, kind of like a, like a silver jet, yeah. uh, so a sparkle jet. And uh, I, have, I have a couple ideas for this NAMM show that I'm going to do. Yeah. So so. I was uh, talking to uh, the Fender Custom Shop Master Builder downstairs and they were kind of talking about how they like to, they get the NAMM ones in the works and they kind of keep it, yeah. keep it close. You got to start thinking like, <laughs> you have to start thinking uh, if, if it's NAM 2011, you got to start thinking then what you're going to do for 2012, yeah. and and now get it in the works because um, we have to have all that done by December, you know, and because in it, you know, time goes so fast. It's just every year it's like, wow, where to go? <laughs> so when a customer a customer calls and they they want to order something, like you mentioned, you know, you weren't totally sold on. The one, one pink sparkle, like what kind of, what is the process with that? Do people work directly with you when they want to order a custom gratuit? Well, no, they, they go to the dealer first sure. and then they uh, submit the order to uh, the sales rep mm -hmm. and I get a spec sheet with the customer's uh, email or phone number and then before I start I'll call them and go over all the specs and uh, if I see something that jumps out that I'm not sure it was quite right. I'll, you know, clarify it with that's what he actually wants, and go from there. Um, and this is a really kind of a cozy shop up here. Yes. You know, we've been through uh, at this point. We've been through Amps and the American mm -hmm. Guitars, and we've been through the Team Build Custom Shop, and then you come up here, and this is like. You you we're don't feel like you're in the biggest guitar yeah. company. We're you know? in our own little world here. There's four of you. There's, let's see. There's. There's five. 
there's myself, we have a Gonzalo, Mike, Ken, and Tony. Tony uh, started with us with the Harrison. I mean, he's been with the company a long time, but I recruited Tony to do the relicking on the Harrison because he's, he's worked on a lot of other projects, relic projects, and he's very good. And so we needed somebody like that. that so, because with the relic projects, the key is consistency. And so I knew he would be the right guy to do that. And so I, uh, he's, he's still with me, and he, he does the buffing, and, and he does my relicking and the detail of the binding. And he helps the other builders out, too. So he's kind of a, a utility guy. But every, everything that comes through the shop, you work on, right? Yes, yes. We, yes, I'm, I'm responsible for every piece coming out of this shop. And, but I... I do have help, and the help I have is very good, and we've been together a long time, and it's um, it's a it's a great gig. <laughs> well, what uh, what are you working on right now? Well, I'm what I'm doing right now is I'm in, in these guitars here in this rack are ready to go to paint. Mm -hmm. So before they go to paint, I check them over and um, make sure everything's copacetic, and uh, then we take them downstairs, put them on a rack, and down to the paint. And this, this is a guitar that we did last year for NAM. It's a 59 Duo Jet, and it's going to have a black back and sides, black headstock face, with a, like a gunmetal gray top, and it has red binding. And it, I saw a, a, I think it was a Dodge Charger that was painted this way and that kind of was my inspiration and I thought that those three colors look really good together with the chrome hardware kind of a car kind of theme. Um, well I appreciate you taking some time to talk to us and, well, and show you. us what you do in this it's it's a nice little cozy shop up here in a, in a, in a real big uh, factory so yes. and you're doing great stuff so thanks a lot. Well, thank you Rebecca right. thank you for coming and spending some time up here. Definitely. This is Rebecca Dirks for PremierGuitar.com